Hello Fiber Friends! Today we are going to do some science. One of the ways that many people ply their yarn, especially if they only have one bobbin, is to put that yarn into a yarn cake or a center pole ball with a yarn winder. You take the end from the inside and you take the end from the outside and you give it twist and that creates a two ply yarn. But sometimes you'll hear people say, don't do that. It will mess up your twist. Well, will it? Is it bad to ply from a center pole ball? I've, I've done a lot of center pole ball plying. I think today we need to do some experimenting and we need to find out. We need some answers. So we're gonna do science. I have us all set up here, ready to go. We are going to ply from two separate bobbins. We are going to ply, this will become a center pole ball in just a moment. And I even have a roll of toilet paper as a visual assistant so that we can see exactly what's going on when people talk about center pole balls affecting twist. So let's, let's get to this. I have spun up, this was a braid in my stash. It was Malabrigo Nube and it is just 100% pure merino wool. I spun it with my Ashford e-spinner and I made sure that the dial was exactly the same. I drafted it exactly the same. So I wanted it to have the same amount of twist and it's divided into half and then two quarters. Those quarters will get plied together and then the other half will get plied back on itself from a center pole ball uh, to, to examine this and look at the two differences and see how they compare and if the twist is really really affected. So let's start with our demonstration. This toilet paper roll, don't worry, all of this will get, you know, used we're not wasting the toilet paper, but we're gonna use it as a little visual here. Uh, so let's take a look. When we have our singles wound up on a bobbin and we ply from that bobbin, the bobbin is usually on some sort of a lazy cape or something holding it so that the bobbin turns while we remove the yarn. And what that means is that clearly whatever state the yarn is in when it's on the bobbin it's going to be removed from the bobbin in that same state however when we wrap that yarn into a center pull ball configuration and we pull the yarn off the center pull ball do you see what's happening here This is gaining some twist. Do you see that? It's not coming off flat anymore. As it rotates around the roll of toilet paper, it's gaining twist. And what's more, when we pull from the center, it gains even more twist. Do you see all this twist we have here? <laughs> it's very twisty. That means that plying these together, pulling from the center, and pulling from the outer edge, they are not experiencing the same amount of twist manipulation. Uh, this outer portion is not gaining as much twist as the inner portion being pulled out. So what does this mean for our yarn? I don't know. <laughs> That's why we're here today. We're gonna find out. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is take the yarn off of this bobbin and put it into a yarn cake or a center pole ball. So let's get that done first. I've just taken the tension off of that, but I will wind it straight from the bobbin. When I remove the center pole ball, uh, for plying purposes, I know that my ends of my yarn are full of twist energy and if I let go, they're gonna floop around and lose that twist. So I always grab both ends before I fully remove it. 
There we go. Okay. <laughs> I grab both ends and I let them start to ply together uh, and that means that as they lose their twist they're wrapping around each other and um, I'm not going to have a yarn that falls apart on that end. On either end. All right we're ready to ply. I should mention that when I spun this yarn for the experiment, I spun it in a Z direction and now I will be plying in an S direction. So I did switch that for the E spinner. I have the dial set directly up and down. That's where I had it when I spun this yarn. So I'm going to, well, let's just keep it exactly the same. How about that? We can see how the yarn is coming off of the center pull ball with the one that's going around the outer edge and the one that is coming out of the center. So you'll notice for this project that I'm doing the whole thing really very low twist. Uh, the single that I spun to be plied was very low twist and the ply uh, that I'm giving it this twist is also pretty low twist. I didn't want the twist to be so much in this project that it started to uh, kind of compress the yarn. I wanted the yarn to stay lofty. I'm hoping that helps us visibly see what the twist is doing. I'm also going to mention that there will be some areas that are a little thick and thin throughout this yarn. Um, Nube is beautiful. Malabrigo has beautiful colors, but Nube is notoriously difficult to spin and I did find that it was a little hard to draft. It doesn't like to draft very much at all. Uh, so um, it's it's a great spin if you're okay. Ooh. It's a great spin if you're okay uh, with some of those inconsistencies being able to work around it. But drafting Nube for a very overall consistent yarn, uh, it's a little tricky. That being said, I have done a whole entire shawl project spinning Nube and it's a lovely shawl. It's very warm and it's incredibly soft. Uh, but just like everything was spinning, it has to work for you and it has to work for your purposes. Sometimes when you're plying from a center pull ball, you'll get a little bit of yarn barf uh, where the yarn starts coming out out of order. I want to show you a little trick to manage that if that happens to you. Get a locking stitch marker and you can pull that bit open however you need to so that it's not catching and you can just put a little clip in it so that it's clipped out of the way and of course you might have to adjust there we go you might have to adjust as you go uh, but with a little interlocking clip you can adjust now it's keeping that all out of the way for me and it's not snagging or pulling out anymore. It might take more than one little stitch marker to fix it, uh, but at some point then, you're gonna catch up to where the stitch marker is holding it, like I just have. So I take it off of there, and we continue on our way. The center pull ball is completely plied and I am going to use the same bobbin. I'm not changing the tension or adjusting anything. I, well, I might have to change the tension if I don't get enough take up, but um, I'm leaving everything set up and I'm just going to put a little uh, knot on the end of this skein so that when I wind it off, I'll see the knot and separate them at that point. Know well, for sure that I've met the end because it'll suddenly go from green to purple. I did also want to use a yarn that had some variegated color because I thought that would help us to visually see the twist and how that looks when we are finished. And I'm plying these together at exactly the same pace, the same rate that I did from the center pull ball.
Okay, we're ending up pretty close here. There we are. That's the end of that one. This is the leader coming off of this bobbin here. And now we have a little bit, eh, not even that much. Just, you can see the leader under there. Not that much left over on this bobbin. One of the reasons why people like to ply from a center pull ball is because they don't have leftovers. And that's valid if you don't like leftovers. Um, but you know, if you measure and you're spinning consistently, you might find that you don't have as many leftovers as you think. Everything has been plied and it's all on this bobbin. I am going to use my Knitter's Pride Yarn Swift. It's pretty cool because it has a crank at the top. So I'm going to use this to put these into skein form. We know from how we unwrapped our toilet paper roll uh, that if it's, it's turning around and the bobbin is turning, we should maintain whatever level of twist is there. We're not gonna be adding or removing any twist from using the equipment this way. So that's what I'm gonna do. As the kids say, I am shooketh. There's more of a difference than I thought there would be and I'm going to bring you in close here uh, to take a look because it's a little, yeah, let's take a look up close. The one on the right is the one that was plied from the center pull ball, and the one on the left is the one that was plied from two separate bobbins. And the first thing that I'm noticing is that overall, this one has a little bit more energy than this one does. This one, if you notice, has some of that waviness to it, um, which means that it has a little bit more twist energy. This one's a little limper. So if we pick them up, shake them around a little bit, and then just drop them in place, yeah, we can clearly see this one does have a little bit more twist energy in it. When we look up close at the center pull ball yarn, we can see a lot more strands that have this particular effect. And I believe this is how we are seeing the effect of the change in twist happening when the yarn is being pulled out of the center pull ball. If you look at these two strands of yarn, one of them is a lot loftier, it's a lot floofier, and one of them, it, it looks skinnier. It's not really skinnier. What it is is that the twist is holding that yarn tighter. Uh, the, the yarn really is about the same diameter. It's just that one has more twist and that twist is compacting that yarn together. The other has less twist. I mean, look, this, this strand, you can see this uh, kind of green stripe in there. It's practically straight through this yarn. This, fluffy strand in there practically has no twist at all um, and the one that's wrapped around it does have more twist. Now if we look up close in the yarn that was plied from two separate bobbins there are some inconsistencies in this yarn uh, right there notably is an inconsistent spot um, but I don't see as much. I see what I see here is look this is very fluffy and lofty, but both strands are very fluffy and lofty, rather than one of these strands being fluffy, fluffy and lofty and one of them being um, more tightly spun and uh, com compacted. I do see some inconsistencies in here where I think the drafting uh, diameter is what made the difference because twist will tend to go to the areas that are thinner and build up in those areas but overall even with the inconsistencies I think a lot of this would probably shake out in a good wash. I really do see more of the floofy strand plus a tighter thinner strand in the center pull ball yarn than I do in the two bobbin plied yarn. This is very interesting. I think there's one more test that we need to perform on our yarn subjects for this uh, experiment, and that would be to knit two swatches. So I'm gonna go swatch these and see what happens. I'll be right back. How did we turn out with our swatches? Well, I took some pictures of them so you can see them up close. 
there is a very subtle difference. I can see it in person and especially when when I hold the swatches and kind of manipulate them a little bit, uh, tip them towards the light away from the light, I can definitely tell that the one that was knit from the center pull ball plied yarn has more stitches that are uh, that are looser. It has stitches that kind of pop up from the fabric from the fluff. It's difficult to capture it exactly on camera, but um, in person I can definitely tell that there is more texture to the stockinette fabric from the yarn that was plied from the center pull ball. When I compare it to the yarn that was just a uh, straight two bobbin ply, that swatch is just much more uniform and it doesn't have those those random little surface texture stitches that kind of poof up a little bit more than the other stitches visually though they look so they look so similar if if I was to walk by these and I didn't know why they were different, there's no way that I would be able to say, oh, well that one was plied this way or that way. Um, the only way I know is because I've done it just now myself. Uh, it looks like hand spun yarn is what it looks like and hand spun yarn has character. So is it wrong to ply from a center pull ball? Absolutely not. Unless it's making yarn you don't want, and then it's pro probably not the right choice for you for that project. But there are no rules about spinning. If you are getting the yarn you want, and if you have the equipment that you want to use and you enjoy using, keep using it. Don't let some lady on the internet tell you not to ply from a center pole ball if you love plying from a center pole ball. Um, and you know, I think also it's good to be informed about what the yarn does and how it behaves because it does affect things. And so if it's not the kind of yarn you want, if you really are going for a very consistent look to your yarn, well, now we know um, you might want to use two separate bobbins. But I think ultimately the thing here is just to know what happens to the yarn and whether or not that's something you want in your project, whether or not to ply from two bobbins or a center pull ball. I hope that other people who are watching this video have noticed things that I didn't notice. If you did, put that in the comments. I would love to hear all about it. Check out my Instagram. I will have some more up close pictures that might be easier to see and examine and get a good look at. I will see you over there and in the comments. Happy spinning!